Hello everyone, I'm Fu Rui, a final year undergraduate from Peking University. Today I'm presenting virtual I2V, renovating road signs for I2V communications. This is a joint work with my amazing colleagues Li Lei, Bo Jun, Chen Ren, Yue, Ke Nuo, Bo Bing, Ken Tai, Gang, and Xuan Zhe. Before we start, I will show a video about the potential applications of virtual I2V. In the future vehicle-to-anything network, we envision that the vehicles will leverage the information from the infrastructure and other vehicles, which empowers them of super sensing and coordination capabilities beyond the onboard sensors. To achieve this, we first need a technology to enable data communication, which is of low cost and energy efficiency. Unfortunately, the current de facto V2X standard dedicated short range communication fails to meet this requirement. We may as well take a step back. The legacy way for drivers to acquire information from the infrastructure is to look at the road sign. Of course, the signs are intended for human eyes and serving most static information. But they are cheap, fully passive, and everywhere. Then, our motivating question is, in order to build a machine-readable road sign capable of providing dynamic information, and in order to find cheap and gradually deployable I2V technology, can we bridge this gap between new smart infrastructure and conventional road signs? I am trying to answer a big yes with the visible light backscatter, which works as follows. Nowadays, most road signs use a special surface material called virtual reflector, which will redirect the beam back to the source with high directionality. This enhances its visibility at night to the illuminating vehicle. And this phenomenon becomes a visible light backscatter simply by adding a modulation and demodulation overlay circuit, that is, and liquid crystal shutter to control the reflection, and a co-located light sensor that will detect the reflection intensity change to decode the information. First, this technology is compatible with road signs and high lights, so we achieve the first goal of a better road sign. Secondly, like any other backscatter communication technology, the visible light backscatter relies on only harvested energy and can run independently without any external power source to provide I2V connectivity much cheaper than DSRC. However, there are still two challenges ahead of us. The first challenge is how to achieve long communication distance. This is critical for road safety because it allows to discover the emergency early and to leave enough time for action. But current visible light solutions only target indoor applications and have very short communication range. To achieve a long range, the key issue is higher signal to interference plus noise ratio. Therefore, we need uh, to lower the negative impact caused by ambient light interference self-interference, and random noise. 
First, why ambient light interference will affect the receiver? This is because baseband data is modulated to DC carrier directly. Now, the ambient light dynamics are of low frequency. They will interfere uplink response received, which is also of low frequency. The solution is simply adopting a switching AC light carrier instead of a DC one. Now, the LED will turn on and off at a higher frequency, modulating the uplink response also at this frequency, which will pass the, the high pass filter at the receiver. But for the ambient light, it will be removed at the high pass filter stage. Moreover, the receiver mixer can be an IQ mixer that will extract phase information and calculate text distance to the reader. Now we come to the second part, the self-interference. There are a lot of reflectors on the road that can reflect the high light beams back to the light sensors on the vehicle. Because the reflected light will have exactly the same switching frequency as the incident light, the switching carrier design cannot filter this self-interference. The key observation is that the ambient reflection is normally unpolarized, but light passing out of the LCD modulator at the transmitter is polarized light. So we will use this to discriminate reflection and signal. The idea is, instead of using conventional LCD shutter to transmit information by amplitude shift keying, we used a modified LCD to achieve polarization shift key and design a polarization differential reception scheme to detect polarization change but ignore unpolarized reflection. Let's first see how transmitter modulate data in polarization, which is based on liquid crystal's basic principle. The core component of the modulator is a glass box of TN liquid crystal. The molecules in it are mole normally arranged in a spiral way, so it will twist any incoming light polarization by 90 degrees. When an external electric field is present, it will rearrange these molecules linearly, so it does not twist the original polarization. Our ritual sign is constructed by adding a ritual reflector for backscattering, and then only one polarizer to filter the incoming unpolarized light into a vertical polarized one. Then, the twisting capabilities of LC layer will decide whether the final outgoing light is of horizontal or vertical polarization. This is how the transmitter modulate the polarization. And let's look at the receiver structure and see how it removes unpolarized interference. The receiver is composed of two photosensors with horizontal and vertical polarizers in front of them respectively. Then. Subtracting the vertical intensity from the horizontal one is PDR's result. Now, if the tag is sending a zero, your horizontal polarized beam of amplitude IT the, and vertical and the horizontally polarized RS1 will detect IT but the vertically polarized RX2 will detect nothing. So the final output is positive IT. Similarly, if tag is sending one, the output is negative IT. That is, the amplitudes of RX1 and RX2 changes, uh, change oppositely when tag alters polarization. However, if there is an unpolarized reflector, the two receivers will detect the same value. So when subtracted, it cancels out. This is how PDR amplifies the signal by two times and cancels out unpolarized reflection.
The last source is random noise, and in an optical system, it is mainly the short shoot noise at each photodiode, approximately following a normal distribution of variance QQB times IA, where Q and B are constant, IA is a, the quiescent current. For a photodiode, that is mainly the photocurrent induced by ambient light. Therefore, the less ambient light, the less shoot noise. Because most cases, the light is unpolarized, so the polarizer in front of Q photodiode will have the amplitude of ambient light, therefore reducing shoot noise by 3 dB. Also, the shoot noise is local to each photodiode, then it is independently distributed. So Rx1 minus Rx2 will incoherently add 3 dB noise, but coherently add 6 dB signal. Therefore, another 3 dB diversity gain. Add them together, we have theoretically 6 dB signal to noise ratio gain from PDR and we have experimentally measured a very close value. To summarize, to boost SINR at long distance, we adopt a switching carrier that filters DC light signal, but more importantly, we design a polarization differential reception scheme that not only cancels unpolarized reflection interference, but also provides 6 dB gain of signal over random noise. The second challenge is to handle coexisting readers and tags, which requires a many-to-many -many MAC protocol. Conventional RFID protocols usually focus on the one-to-many case. That is, the collision between tags, also known as synchronous uplink collision. This happens when multiple tags are trying to answer a reader query. It has been properly handled with the slotted Aloha protocol in popular RFID protocols. The idea is reader can allocate multiple slots. The idea is reader can allocate multiple slots and tag will reply at a random one in the hope of separating tags from each other. However, the challenge here is that in I2V scenarios, it is a many-to-many -many communication with multiple readers computing for the channel, which leads to complex collision. Specifically, there are two more kinds of collision. First, downlink collision. When a reader sends a conflicting downlinks to a tag at the same time, and asynchronous uplink collision, when two readers try to communicate with two different tags, but now there is a superior path if two tags are both in one reader's view. Like in this figure, the green beam reader covers both tags, and this reader will receive. To design a many-to-many -many protocol, we propose two simple yet effective methods. First, to detect and avoid downlink collision, we let the readers to wait for a random period before sending, when no uplink energy is detected. Second, to avoid asynchronous uplink collision, we do not allow readers to send when uplink data is detected to avoid being interfered by ongoing traffic. To further boost the MAC efficiency, we also propose several optimizations, such as reducing front structure and ID less, piggybacking X channel reuse by overhearing during waiting period, and so on. Please refer to our paper or open source simulator for details. We evaluate ritual I2V over three main aspects. First, for the physical layer, we build a prototype and validate the bit to implement ritual I2V reader, we use a bundle of three flashlights and configure the power and FOV to emulate a typical high beam headlight. And we put the receiver in the center. In the receiver, the polarizer and lens are glued on a customized base above the photodiodes and PCB of analog front end. A Cortex MCF microcontroller finally decodes the ADC samples and performs upper layer MAC operations all in real time. For ritual sign, it uses a modular design of 9 by 9 centimeters basic unit. We assembled 36, 18, and 3 of them to make ritual signs of three different sizes, 
large traffic signs, small sign, and warning triangle. The energy consumption is roughly proportional to the area. We first evaluate the long-range reliability under different ritual sign configurations. We use the raw bit error rate of 1% as the criterion of communication distance. The result shows that we can achieve about 80 meters at 1 kilobits per second or even higher at lower data rate. We also evaluate the impact of ritual sign size. It shows that due to high pass loss, the change over working distance over the reflection aperture change is sublinear. We also evaluate the impact of ritual sign size. It shows that due to high pass loss, the relationship between working range and reflection aperture is sublinear, which is a good news for smaller ritual signs. Our result shows that the smallest warning triangle type can communicate over 43 meters at one kilobits per second. In order to understand the robustness of our system, we have conducted extensive experiments over different weather conditions as well as mobility levels. For weather condition, it shows that sunlight is causing excessive shoot noise and lower SNR, although the decreased 60 meter distance still satisfies safety requirements. It also shows that lower visibility weather, such as raining, is less harmful than sunlight. For mobility evaluation, it shows that the speed doesn't increase the bit error rate. So our system is robust to common mobility levels. Second, for the Mac layer, we tested our system under an extreme many-to-many -many scenario and also made simulations over various normal traffic conditions. We put the reader and text densely to evaluate the collision handling capability of our protocol. We use the session completion time as an indicator, which is the duration it takes for all readers to discover all tags. The result shows that the time is mainly determined by the number of tags, and the number of readers makes only a marginal difference which indicates that multi-reader problem has been solved properly in our protocol. We also built a simulator to evaluate MAC performance under regular traffic of residential, local highway, or interstate highway. Our, our results show that with one kilobits per second uplink, we can achieve near zero miss rate under a moderate road sign density. Please refer to our paper for details. The third is cost and power consumption. Ritual sign achieves 10 times lower deployment cost and 100 times lower power consumption compared to DSRC. The most expensive part in the ritual sign is a LCD panel, about $100 per square meter. The power consumption when at one kilobits per second is about 60 milliwatts per square meter. This price is a little more expensive than road signs for static information, but of a similar cost to LED variable message signs with a thousand times lower power consumption. Comparing Ritual I2V with standard technology DSRC, we find that in order to earn the benefits of higher throughput or longer range, one must pay 10 times more cost per roadside unit and even more cost for power and backhaul connectivity. In conclusion, we proposed the first visible light backscatter infrastructure to vehicle communication system. It is a renovated low power and low cost solution to distribute dynamic in situ information to vehicles. We achieve a long range operation robust to ambient reflection changes under mobility through the polarization based differential reception scheme. We designed a decentralized MAC protocol for scalable many-to-many -many communications. With this, I would like to conclude my talk and thanks for your attention.